Hi, um, this is going to be the first demonstration and lecture in a series that is uh, going to teach you how you can create web mockups in Photoshop and then generate uh, web assets from those mockups. And this is a new feature, a relatively new feature, I should say, in um, Photoshop CC. And it, uh, unfortunately, for those of you who have anything older than that, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. Um, it's a as I said, a relatively new feature, and it's a terrific feature. It moves away. If you've ever used slicing uh, in the past for Photoshop, if you haven't, then don't worry about it. But if you ever use the slice tool in Photoshop, they finally sort of did away with that nonsense because it doesn't really address the, um, the current web industry standards of how you build a web page anymore. So um, what this is going to do is allow like sort of a layering effect the way that you would layer your stuff when you're building websites. You're able to build your image assets in layers and um, it's, it's sort of more fluid and helpful um, in the way that Photoshop deals with it nowadays. So um, first things first though, uh, one of the things that we will be addressing, um, uh, and I'll get to it in a little bit more detail, um, but we're not going to go crazy into detail about it, is responsive design, which is a topic that is a current standard in um, web design these days. And, you know, this is not a web design course, and this is not, you know, assuming that you know anything at all about web design, uh, nor is it assuming that you're going to ever be a web designer. What this uh, lesson is going to do is just introduce some, some topics and touch on them so that you understand why we're choosing the dimensions that we're choosing and why you would need to do multiple layouts as opposed to just one layout. If you're trying to give something or hand something over to, say, a developer, maybe you're the person who gets to design the interface visually. Um, you need to have some basic understanding of uh, current industry standards without having to actually know how to code and all of that stuff. So we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But first I wanna talk about you know the basic project that we have at hand. What the, the project outline addresses is that you should start doing some sketches of layout before you try to start building it in Photoshop. And the reason for that, of course, is you know, you can waste a lot of time trying to build something in Photoshop when really you can just have a very low level of commit commitment, low stakes kind of um, exercises where you're just doing some sketches, toss them if you don't like them, you know, use an eraser or whatever, use a pen and pencil, sort of low tech, analog, old school way of doing things. Sometimes it's the best way of doing things um, when you're brainstorming. So, um, let me just show you real quickly kind of where we start, where I started with a sketch. So I just dropped a, a scan of the sketch into um, a, a web browser. And basically what this is, is it's a small image. Of course, our website wouldn't be this small. So let me blow this up a little bit. So it's a little sketch that, um, and of course, this actually still wouldn't be this small. The intention is that this would take up, you know, like full screen. Um, up to say 1,280 pixels, and I'll get into why 1,280 in a little bit. But um, pretend like this is, you know, really 1,280, and it takes up more space than this. Um, but this is a sketch, and it gives you an idea of like there would be like a navigation bar up here. You know, it's not the greatest. You know, you might have a hard time reading this, but this is like a link up here. It says who we are, our team, and then contact us. And then here's a logo. And it's for uh, a fake interior design company called Warner and Mitchell Design. And then, you know, you sort of have this sort of uh, statement right here. Um, we are interior designers. As I said, this is fake. Maybe this company would do commercial interior design as well as residential. So here we've got commercial gallery and this is residential gallery. And you might have like a couple. This could either be an indication of it's a slider or it could be you know, like where it fades in and out, or it could just be some static images that are links that will take you to a gallery, um, maybe that would pop up in a bigger window on top of everything. And then there's like a little uh, piece of information about the company right here. That's what these scribble lines are. And then down here, you would have a section that's that shows our team. Um, so when you scroll down, you would get like a little picture and, you know, what I did include here that I should have is like the name of the person underneath. You typically would want to put the name of that person, maybe even what they do. 
And then there would be a contact form. This over here, this is intended to be a map, like a Google map, you know, that where you could actually have a live map right here. Um, but then there's a contact form that's, you know, hey, we'd want to hear from you. And these are input form fields. And then you've got a send button. And then down here, you've got some social media links for the company, like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, LinkedIn. And then you've got this footer down at the bottom where you repeat the logo sort of to remind people of the branding. And then also, I didn't put this in my sketch. This is something I'd probably want to include, is um, the address, the physical address, and also a phone number and email or website or whatever contact information. Those are always good things to have on a website. And then a little button down here that says top, where if you were to click it, it would scroll up to the top for you. OK, so that's sort of the general one page you know, landing page design that we have for this company. Really simple. And um, so uh, right now, the first thing that we're going to focus on before we move into the next uh, video, I'm just going to sort of give you a just basic idea of what it is that we're going to focus on. And then I'll show you kind of where we're going to end up with the project um, before we actually go through the exercise um, or the lesson. Um, but where we're going to ultimately end up is we're, you know, ideally you would want to have something that's sort of for larger screens, like maybe 1280 and be bigger. But then maybe you'd want another one that would be like maybe 800 pixels wide for smaller devices. Uh, and then you would go down to really small phones where you would have another layout, which all of this stuff would reflow in, in a different order for really smaller phones like, you know, right around 320 or something like that. That's a standard width for a lot of smaller phone devices like, say, the older iPhones and, and so forth. Um, <clears throat> but right now, what we're going to really focus on is this 1280 dimension. Um, and so don't worry about the other ones. But just understand that the idea of doing this mock-up is that you would ultimately probably have more than one mock-up. But as I said, we're going to focus on this one. Now, real quick, I'm going to show you kind of where we would end up, all right, because I sort of already put some stuff together. So let's see where we're going to end up, but then I'll show you after this the process of getting there, OK? OK, so I just opened up uh, this larger uh, image, right? So from this sketch, you know, went off and created a few things that we're going to do in this assignment. And first, just go ahead and create like a, a just a basic set of vectors where you are creating sections of your website you know so this this blue area would probably have a banner background image behind it um, this is the logo for the company which I'm going to show you how to create so we're going to like be using some vector tools placing all of these shapes with vectors so that then we can later go and um, just apply smart objects to them with pictures and so forth and then we're going to be dealing of course with some typography issues um, and then something that you think want to th always think of is when you're designing for the web, just like to design a book or you know a brochure or something like that for print, you're going to have a style guide because you always want to have sort of a roadmap for developers and for publishers and so forth. You want to have some kind of stylistic roadmap for people to follow. So that would be like we're going to talk about you know managing color. We're going to talk about uh, how to how to do swatches, how to save swatches, export swatches, things like that. Um, also dealing with type size. So you would think you would want to think about keeping your type sizes consistent for different levels. There are typically different levels of typography in, um, uh, in, in web design. OK, so here this is just some lorem ipsum placeholder text. Here's the our team thing with, you know, uh, here's that contact form I was telling you about and so forth, OK? So this is a really basic thing that we're going to put together in this step. Now, the next step, of course, would be to go ahead and start applying the images and, and so forth. And in this area, what we're going to talk about, of course, are going to be things like using smart objects and uh, how to do non-destructive filtering and you know, scaling and adjustments of color and things like that. So for instance, this is a, a smart object, this this architectural detail in the background here that I'm of this uh, looks like some like girders and beams and things. Um, so that you whenever we go from different sizes and if we decide that we're going to use this in other layouts, then we can have one really large image asset. 
Um, and then as a smart object, it won't uh, lose its quality if it's just linked to that item uh, in a separate file. And then we can just tell it how big to be here. And then it's not actually destroying it. It's just sort of rescaling it here for us, as opposed to the older ways of dealing with Photoshop and much older versions is that you would have to sort of like throw data away, pixel data away, whenever you scale. <clears throat> excuse me, scaled something down. Well, you don't do that anymore with smart objects, and it's pretty much becoming the standard way of doing business. Okay, so, um, and then also this, of course, is dealing with color adjustment and so forth. And then down here, we've got these pictures, um, and you'll see, uh, like, one of the things I'll show you is how you can use Camera Raw to adjust, you know, these pictures um, for their color. And again, it's non-destructive, so, any, at any time, I could go back to the original picture and I could modify, and it's still got the original image data. Okay, And then down here, we've got, again, another smart object in the background for this, this background image, uh, adjustment layer for color and so forth. And then we've got all of these. These are not real people. I mean, they're real people. They're not fake people, but they're not, you know, this is not a real company. These are not real names. And uh, down here, what we've got is... You'll notice that there's a, a Google Map image. This is just a placeholder image. This isn't an image we would actually really use. It is a placeholder where a developer later would come in and actually put a real Google Map API in there so that you could pan and scroll and zoom and do searches and stuff like that for locations. But for now, it's just a placeholder image so you can get an idea of what it's supposed to look like. And then you'll also notice that there's a background image that's really faint back here. It's of a typewriter. So um, that's something built in, right, to the contact form. And then we've got, you know, our link, our footer link bar, and then we've got, you know, this top button and this other information. Okay, so that's kind of where we're going to go with this assignment. What we're going to do in the exercise is we're going to sort of take discrete components like logo creation and things like that to discuss certain kinds of tools and techniques that are built into these individual different areas of this assignment.